and welcome to 52%, the show that talks about everything and anything going on in Liverpool and beyond from the perspective of 52% of the population, women. This time we're looking forward to Christmas and all things children's toys. What's on their Christmas lists? What toys do we give our children and the toys we choose? What does that say about us? So here's what's coming up on today's show. Today we're joined by Dr Julie Kirkham from the University of Chester. Julie specialises in child development and psychology. Julie, tell us a little bit about your job and role. Um, well, I specialise in uh, child development um, and I look particularly at how children learn through play and the role of um, drawing in development as well. Do you have children yourself? I don't know, but I have four nieces and nephews who range from eight months through to um, eight years old. So I've got quite an experience of, of children in that capacity. Does the job put you off? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think it's more the experience of the lack of sleep you get with children that's put me off. You must get that in academia anyway though, right? Yeah, yeah that's kind of true. <laughs> what's, what's the most um, outstanding thing you've found in your role? Um, I think the most interesting thing that I've researched uh, in my work is I, I look particularly at fantasy play. Yeah. So I'm very much interested in uh, children's imaginary friends. Um, and one of the things I'm most interested is in is the fact that um, having an imaginary friend is associated with some developmental benefits. So in the past, it's been seen as quite a negative thing. Um, but actually, we know now that kids who have imaginary friends tend to have um, more developed um, social emotional abilities mm -hmm. and sometimes language abilities as well. Do they particularly have imaginary friends at a certain age? or And at what time do the, the imaginary friends seem to kind of leave? There's a, there's a peak period for kind of the creation of imaginary friends, which I'm not entirely sure of, but the kind of toddler years. So okay. as you get past middle childhood, it, it becomes less, less regular or um, less frequent. Um, but they can continue into adolescence. Wow. And really? some adults also um, still um, converse with their imaginary friends, for example. Um, so researchers have found that people who, authors for example, who write a lot of fiction, um, they tend to have had childhoods where they've engaged in more fantasy and imaginary play. So it seems like that kind of play is particularly important to uh, creativity, for example. Is there As a reason why it's developed? Is, it, is there a trauma or something that's happened? Or There's a, a few theories about why children develop imaginary friends. And, and one is that they've experienced some kind of trauma and that the imaginary friend kind of acts to someone who they're able to mm. discuss their fears and anxieties with. Um, it's also kind of associated with play in general. So a lot of children's play involves the imagination. Um, and you can see imaginary friends as a more um, advanced version of, of pretend play that involves creating a, another person to interact with. Would you advise parents to go with it when this happens rather than to try and cut through it and say, no, it's, oh, come on, there's no one there? I definitely, I mean, having an imaginary friend, the most important thing is that it's not a sign of uh, problems, for example. Okay. So it's it's actually quite common um, in childhood. And as I said, if you think about having an imaginary uh, friend and creating that imaginary friend, um, that actually takes a lot of... Um, a lot of skill and a lot of knowledge so to be able to think about another person to think about you know what likes or dislikes they have or you know how they view the world it's actually quite cognitively advanced mm. so kids who do create imaginary friends there's some research that suggests that they're they're more creative um, they're more able to see the world from somebody else's perspective well we're talking about imaginary friends and almost projecting a personality or creating a personality mm. for that friend. How about yeah. toys? Do you find that that happens with children with their toys? And 
Definitely, yes. Yeah. So um, sometimes some researchers say that um, children, they might have a favourite toy, such as a teddy, for example, and they might engage in that in a really prolonged way and give it a personality, mm. um, take it to meals, take it on excursions. And some people consider that to be like an imaginary friend as well. Um, so are there better toys that, you know, that parents should be encouraging their children to use to help develop their creativity? I think, I mean, a lot of the psychological research talks about pretend plays being particularly important. Well, a movement that started on the other side of the world, actually, I believe it was Australia or New Zealand, um, has inspired artistic women and made its way to the Wirral. It's called the Tree Change Dolls, and they take recycling to a whole new place. They transform dolls to make them into realistic role models. They are amazing. I would recommend every mother to go and see them. Gael met Whipkey Hot at the Owl Tree to find out a little bit more. It's across the Mercy on Market Street in Birkenhead that Wipka Hot Cavana opened the Owl Tree in 2013, a sling library shop and family centre offering services and activities to parents with babies and young children. Last year, Wipka launched an unusual workshop, the Tree Change Dolls. So Tree Change Dolls um, are the creation of a woman called Sonia Singh from Melbourne who um, found all these um, fantastic Barbie dolls in charity shops and decided um, for her daughter she wanted to change them, give them a little make under really. Um, and she um, did a lot of fantastic work, um, offered a couple up for, for sale and this is how um, the information about her work started to ripple out really across the internet or on social media and eventually something popped up in my newsfeed. Um, and when I saw the video of the work that she was doing I was just really inspired. I thought this is a brilliant idea and as a mother of a five-year-old who sees um, dolls in the shops and who sees maybe watches advertisement every now and then um, I thought this would be a really wonderful idea of, of kind of taking ownership of, of what these dolls might be like. So Sonia in her videos showed really quite clearly what it is how she was doing. She even put a couple of tutorials on. So she showed that she, for example, was using acetate to remove the paint and working with Q-tips, using simple acrylic paint. So equipment and materials that we all have yeah. available or can really get easily get hold of. Um, so I kept my eyes open then going through charity shops and thought like, um, can I find some dolls? Can I find something that we wanted to change? And um, very quickly found a drop lot of them actually. <laughs> Um, 30, 30 naked Barbie dolls um, were waiting in a box and I, I bought them all and then started doing these workshops and just share some of the ideas and it was fantastic to see how people changed and um, created their own dolls that they wanted to play with. Um, Barbie dolls these days seem to be having a makeup that is a constant glamorous going yeah, out in the evening true. makeup and it is just it's not that they should not have any makeup it is just something that is maybe slightly more tuned to yeah. everyday use I guess yeah. more realistic um, that's yeah, it, yeah. We're not dressed up like that any day no right. that's it so how does it work the how does it work the workshop how, how um, can we just like pop in and with our kids or mm -hmm. so usually um, with the Altry the program is up on the Facebook page so that um, people know what is on for the week and if um, any special art and craft workshops are happening the advertisement is there so I would then advertise it um, as a tree change uh, or I'll tree change doll workshop <laughs> um, and then um, people can come in um, there um, often is uh, or there usually is a fee um, so that the, for the first doll they would pay seven pounds for any additional toll it, it would be three pounds yeah. so if they wanted to do um, several so often mum and, and child are kind of working on two dolls yeah, and exactly. it, it kind of makes it a lovely little project um, we also have a knit nutter session on a Thursday where people then um, can knit some clothes or sew some clothes oh, um, in order to change them as well because again the clothes is um, often not quite as practical <laughs> for everyday <laughs> use um, and and there you go so it is um, people can just come along for these workshops um, whenever they fancy yeah, sounds good um, so wh what was I mean what did you want to start this workshop in the first place I mean uh, you've said that, that they're not realistic was mm -hmm. it something that you wanted to show to your daughter as well absolutely. maybe absolutely yeah. absolutely I think there was really um, I think the, the proportion of a Barbie doll are really quite astonishing I think the, the legs are twice as long yeah. as the actual torso I think there's a lot that is just severely out of proportion the fact that they're um, sexualized in one way so they have these um, perfect um, very round boobs but they actually <laughs> have um, no vulva no yeah. no nothing else <laughs> that is identifying them is really um, quite shocking no nipples also as well which is like why? What is that about? So if you have the boob, why not have the nipple as well? But no. Um, so I think there's, there's a lot that actually is um, 
it's it's a very cleaned up, sexualized mm-hmm. kind of way, and just doesn't feel right at all. So I didn't want Josie to think of it of her own body, of my body in any shape or form. Like this is the norm, or this is anything yeah. um, that is out there. Um, and by at least painting them, we can already take some ownership, and it kind of makes them makes them hers rather than um, Mattel's version of of what a woman is looks like, behaves like, yeah. sits like with her arms. <laughs> like this um, we don't tend to do that that's true um, and you were talking about creativity I've seen you um, painting and mm. you can create whichever I mean like Absolutely. we've got loads of different things Absolutely. So we have um, the beginnings of a of a cat here. Um, we thought about um, maybe looking at at um, a superhero. So there's really um, all sorts of possibility to kind of change um, your dolls into whatever it is that you would like them to be. I think anything is possible. And to see even a five year old who might not have you know as much control over her brush, just giving it a go and making it hers is amazing. You know, who says it has to be a perfect eye and perfect yeah. eye makeup? It doesn't. And because it is so easy to take off, you know, when she's done with it, we're gonna paint it again into something else that's the good thing yeah exactly and uh, there's lots of barbies what about for the boys well um, I was absolutely <laughs> gutted but on my hunt around charity shops and we have a lot of charity shops in this mm-hmm. guide I could not find a single action man no Ken um, I'm not sure where they're hiding but um, apparently not in the charity shops I will keep my eyes peeled yeah. so obviously if we can find them um, they'll be next <laughs> should we give a call maybe for the viewers as well like yeah, if, please, they, if they absolutely <laughs> if you have any any Ken's action men um, sitting at home um, who are um, in need of a make over a make under Movember anything <laughs> bring them around and we can give them freckles mustaches we can kind of do um, all sorts of exciting things here make overs as well anything goes <laughs> great thank you very much again of course my pleasure thank you for coming Welcome back. This time we're talking about children's toys, what's on our kids' Christmas list, what do the toys we give our children say about us. We're joined by Julie from the University of Chester and before the break we saw Gael speaking to Whipkey Hot to find out all about upcycling and transforming dolls to make them onto more realistic role models for our children. What did you make of that, Julie? I think it's an excellent idea because I think the toys that children play with give them ideas about concepts and, and people within yeah. the real world. So you want to give children a, a, a realistic idea of, of what it means to, to be a woman. Um, so obviously a lot of these toys do have, you know, they're wearing a lot of makeup and obviously women do wear makeup and, you know, for particular parties and things like that, but that's not always what we look like. No, we don't walk around all day with our, well, some of us do, I suppose, but <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it is unrealistic, isn't it? And yeah. it's not, you know, we, you know, having to deal with the every day bits and pieces how about uh, what, what have you noticed during the play with children that how how girls react to so-called boys toys and especially in the early years up to five before they become conscious of what's expected of them I mean, one thing I would say is children develop a, a sense very early on of what's expected of them. Mm-hmm. So, you know, even before birth, we, we tend to yeah. have kind of gender stereotyped colours for uh, infants' bedrooms. Yes. So, you know, from birth, children are really starting to develop understanding of differences between the sexes and then later on of what society expects about um, particular genders. Janine um, Greer thinks that some things in terms of gender are hardwired in men and women as they are in dogs, for example. Do you think it's nature versus nurture or is it, are you saying it's basically a measure, a balancing act between both? I mean, I think as in most areas of psychology, I think now we see it as a, a mixture between both. So there's definitely hormonal influences upon, um, you know, what sex um, you're born as. Yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously your hormones also influence your behaviour as well in okay. terms of levels of aggression, which is associated with more with masculinity. Um, but at the same time, you learn through um, social um, awareness. So the people around you and the objects around you influence how you develop and behave. Mm. So particularly how parents interact with their yeah. children um, influences their understanding of their own um, gender and of other people's genders as well. But the idea presumably isn't to become gender neutral. It's perfectly acceptable to be 
a feminine woman, if that's who you are, you're saying yeah. your parents are very influential. Yeah. So if your mum is very feminine, then that's it's fine to go with that. But you, what you're saying yeah. is that will have an impact on the child's conception of femininity. But you often get children going the other way. If mum's very feminine, the, the daughter in particular could be a tomboy. You mean as a reaction yeah. to it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, going back to toys, and I mean, obviously I have a son and a daughter, and they automatically, when they were, you know, babies and toddlers, veered towards the male toys or the female toys. Which is the nature versus nurture yeah. idea. Yeah. That, that, so it wouldn't have mattered what I did. Harry was always going to go for Thomas the Tank Engine. Is like that really that. true, do you think? I mean, well, I think it, it was yeah. for me, from, from, you know, from my point I of see, view. I, I see it all the time family. with other kids, with, like with um, my friend's mm -hmm. children, for example, too. It seems as though they're naturally drawn. Yeah. Well, How well, kick a ball I'm, I'm going to have to, to <laughs> be the person who's yeah, the exception I'm, to this, because my younger yeah, son was absolutely besotted with the colour pink <laughs> until he realised it wasn't right for him yeah. to be besotted yeah. with That's it so to the sad. point where yeah. we went to a fairground and there were these little cars going around on a track and he chose the pink Barbie car. He sat in the driving seat really proud. Next thing we know it slows down. Two gorgeous little toddlers girls get in the back and he's like this made up driving them along. <laughs> Pink is the way forward. Absolutely but it was when he was about four he started to say oh no no I prefer green, prefer oh, green. Yeah. That's very a much, shame. Yeah, it very much fits in with the psychological research that by age four children have got a more constant understanding of, consistent understanding right. of their own gender and although we might not think that we're consciously reinforcing gender stereotypes behaviours, children can are very mm. sensitive to yes. us and we may be unconsciously, for example, paying them more attention when they're interacting with gender appropriate toys and they then pick up on that and, and there's a natural desire to want to, to please Jeez. your parents. And, well, it probably wasn't so much us but maybe the nursery he was attending yeah. at the yes. time because yeah. that, that yeah. had up, but he's going to yeah. kill me now, I've said this. <laughs> <interview>. <laughs> what can we well, just change that? Yeah. Or should we be trying to or is it is it acceptable? Yeah. I, I definitely think that as, as adults both um, teachers and parents we all have a role in challenging these kind of behaviors and it's very important because if you think about constructions of masculinity and femininity traditionally being feminine has been associated with more negative attributes yeah. in terms of being passive or being mm -hmm. submissive or mm -hmm. having less access to uh, job opportunities yeah. for example so if we don't kind of challenge those notions then we're not enabling you know our daughters to have mm. the same op opportunities mm. as our sons might have and um, so really what we want to do is to say you know there's all of these different kinds of toys and they all give all different kinds of skills and all children should have access to all of the different kind of mm. toys and let them make up their own minds what they want to play with and if they want to play with um, yeah. with dolls as a, as a female or a male um, then we should be encouraging that because different kinds of toys teach different kinds of skills. To encourage femininity isn't necessarily always to encourage passivity though is it? You know no, it might be no. possible to encourage that side of it yeah. and yet to raise male and female children to believe that um, passivity and submission are not inevitable. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's and, a trend yeah. at the moment, isn't it? For, you know, the, the, the buzzword is it's good for men to be in touch with their feminine side. Yeah. And there's more gender fluidity in, yeah. the, in the younger generations now. Did you well. see, you know, Toys R Us, they started mm. a campaign yeah. whereas um, yeah. toys are not boy toys, toys are not girl toys, yeah. toys are just toys. Yeah. Let your children play with toys. What yeah. are your thoughts on that? Do you think that's a good idea? Or? I think that's a brilliant idea. And within early years education, um, educators are instructed to actively um, challenge kind of ger gender stereotypes stereotyping um, because you see within early years that often um, children might be encouraged to play with a particular set of toys because it's seen as being gender specific mm. but for example dolls um, and kind of social dramatic play where there's a storyline it really helps children to understand themselves and to understand other people so particularly in terms of emotional understanding um, and one thing we know unfortunately um, with um, teenage males and, and young males is it was in the news recently um, that about one quarter of males um, feel find it very difficult or don't think it's socially acceptable to talk about their emotions mm, and that's associated mm. with um, a high suicide yeah. risk for yeah. that particular mm. population. Mm. Well you touched on dolls there I mean it's interesting because obviously as you know I've got one of each and um, they both had dolls to, to mm. a certain degree but if, if I'd have given Harry um, a Barbie doll. If he'd have picked up a Barbie and a Cindy, yeah. it would have his play would have been more aggressive. Whereas Olivia, she would have been more 
more romantic and soft and more sensitive. So uh, that's nothing that I've done to encourage that. That's just... You're saying it's nature. Yeah, I definitely But what you're saying is nature. that toys have a role in nurture as well. I think it's oh, both, definitely. yeah. I think they yeah. Comp in the yeah. right background, they complement each other. But yeah. ultimately, um, I think boys are boys and girls are girls. But I think it also helps with parents as well, whether or not parents are going to be sort of say, oh, no, don't play with that toy. Why don't you play yes. with this toy and yeah. encouraging them down that route? Yeah. Whereas if you're very sort of a very open-minded yeah. parent, there was a guy over in America, actually, whose son wanted to um, to get dressed up and he wanted to get dressed up as his favourite uh, TV character, which was Elsa from Frozen. Yeah. And, you know, so he's got a little boy wearing a dress yeah. and and, he, and the dad was like, this is awesome. My, you know, it's make-believe, it's fantasy and this yeah. is what my... And he was fully supporting him. Except that the values that Disney espouse are extremely concerning, aren't they, mm. on some fundamental levels in yes. terms of how they Disney's look so at children, fake. how they, yeah, and how they construct female um, and how we'll all be saved by the prince models. at the end. And of she's the day. always the perfect size eight with shiny hair. <laughs> it's not <laughs> real. Female-centered yeah. narratives yeah. aren't feminist yeah. necessarily, and that's really important. A, a, a female at the center of a storyline, even espousing some strength at various mm. stages, that's not necessarily feminism. It's whether the story as a whole shores up equality mm. yes. between the sexes. That's mm. it. Yeah. Mm. Do you think it's simple. getting better? I mean, I, th I think so, definitely compared to, to the past. And you can see other countries, for example, uh, Sweden really takes the yes. lead on, on gender issues and, and challenging those within, within the early years. Um, and I think, but well, most of all, it's, what's important is that we give children the best chance to develop um, and learn and, and play is the, the main arena in which they do that mm. uh, as children and I think what's more concerning to me rather than gender is you know having time for play within the curriculum. Indeed we're, no. we're always having tests and things so, you yeah. know, there's okay. something and too even driven. more coming yeah, up definitely. now aren't there. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm. Well we're going to come back after the break and talk about this a little bit more um, and we'll also be looking at Toytopia to find out what the kids and their families thought of the latest toys there. See you in a few minutes. Welcome back. This time we're talking about children's toys. What's on our kids' Christmas list? What do the toys we give our children say about us? We're joined by Julie from the University of Chester. Last month, the new exhibition centre held an incredible toy fair, showcasing some of the new and exciting things that get kids engaged. Theo from Bay TV News team headed over on our behalf to chat to some of the people visiting the event. So what are your favourite kind of toys? Xbox. <laughs> what do you like about what do you like about games consoles? Um, the fun and easy. Maggie, what are your favourite toys? Barbies. Sylvania family. What do you like about Sylvania family? Because they um because they're fairy. I know it's a bit early to be thinking about, but you're written a Christmas list, Jen. No. I've got one in my head. Have you? What's on it? Um, a hard drive for the Xbox One, um, Battlefield Hardline, and then a hard drive for the TV so I can put movies on it. The Barbie life in the dream has come from Van so do you think you've both got quite different ideas there? Do you think your idea your ideas are more suited to boys or girls or do you think it's for both? What do you reckon? More boys and girls. Yeah. And Maggie, what do you think? Do you think girls are boys and girls or Christian? Just girls. Just girls. Does it remind you of when you, you played with toys, is it? No, not no. one bit. No. Not one bit. <laughs> what kind of toys did you play with when you um, were your granddaughter's thing? Straps and Ludo and yeah. I don't know, cards and used to make models yeah. on their brains and uh, roller skates and Monopoly and that type board of stuff. Games, yeah. Board games, board games mainly. Yeah. Football, that's all I played when I was younger. Well, our one is she's, is, more she's of a up, boy, so, so she goes has. for more yeah. boyish things. If you but know she has had dolls and that. Not, yeah, not she's that not really into but she likes fluff. She likes cuddly. Yeah. Things, you know, so it's a bit of both. 
to be honest, computers have taken over. You know, you don't see as many kids play out as much as they used to. They're all on computer games, and, and I, I think that's a bit so sad, she, she comes really. in our house. That's she, it. She runs for the draw for her iPad. She knows so. me, me password, that's it, bang. You don't get another word out of it. My grandchildren like to make things, you know. Oh, yes, it's... Um, it shows you how fast technology's got, you know. Um, it was only an apple and orange we had years ago and a little mock doll. Now it's, I mean, the, the flying thing's amazing and, and the little fish and the, um, even even to the suitcase with the skateboard. It's, it's brilliant, you know. Not, I don't think any of them aimed at the gender, really. I think... I think little boys now, they like to play with children as these two boys do. They, they love to play with the little girly stuff. There's no, there's no different. But, um, Misha likes the uh, dragons and the dinosaurs. I don't think, I, I think it's all diverse now. It's years ago it was. A, a girl had a uh, pram, a boy had a ball. Now, it's all mixed. Children should have the freedom to pick whatever they want. You, you shouldn't dictate. You know, we watch the children watch telly and they see what they want. You know. I mean, Bob likes to wear the high heels, the princess high heels. <laughs> but that's a, he's going through that stage. Brody started doing it the other day, so. It's just one of the dress up, they like to do that, you know. Diversity is a child of its own pick. What do you think of all these sorts of high tech toys like the drones and the. Um, I don't even know what you call the other ones, the ones you stand on? Uh, they are also. Scooter suitcases. Yeah, what do you think of those? Quite cool because you can you can ride a scooter and you can take your clothes with you or toys. <laughs> the aqua beats for girls and boys and Minecraft. Minecraft. Hmm. Like superheroes like Batman and that. Yeah, they're mostly they're, for boys. They're boys. How would it make you feel if there was a toy that you wanted to play with that was that people said was just for boys? How would that make you feel? Disappointed. I'm sad. Because if you like want to play with something that is like for the different for boys, um, you shouldn't really have to like. Shouldn't really have to always like play with the thing like for girls should play with girl stuff and boys should play with boy stuff. They can like boys can play with girl stuff if they want and girls can play with boy stuff if they want. That did make me giggle, that VT. <laughs> the difference between what the kids were saying and playing to what the adults were saying yes. and not playing with. What did you make of that? Julie, your thoughts would be interesting. I, mean, I thought it was really interesting that the parents were obviously really encouraging of, of diversity in play, um, but I think children are very much aware of the expectations of their peers yeah. and that can drive mm. their behaviour as well. Um, so children from a young age are aware of what other people might think and they're yeah. socialised by their peers as well as by parents and by teachers as well. I just wanted to play with the lightsabers. <laughs> me too, me too. I'll meet you outside. <laughs> no, no. I don't know which one of us would win. <laughs> It was, a, it was a little boy that was playing with the lightsaber and there was a little girl standing watching. Why, why wasn't she? I mean, you can get pink lightsabers if it's that. It was a know. pink one I liked, actually. Yeah, I don't know what see. that says about me. Yeah, <laughs> nature <That's good>. or <laughs> nurture. <laughs> no, but there were some really, really good toys there. Um, and to touch on what some of the uh, adults said, um, in fact, I can relate to this. They, when they were younger, they were playing outside, and kids now they come round, they go straight on the computer. Mm. It is tragic that actually, it is, isn't and, it? You know, I just think you've got same. to limit time yeah. on computers. Is you that, have is, to. Does your research imply that that's a good idea? I mean, 
There's a lot of research ongoing about you know, children watching TV and playing on computer games. And, and one thing that's clear is that there's been a decline in, in physical activity. And as such, there's been an associated rise in and obesity. And a decline in reading? Um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure of the, of the research on it, but I think you know, the more that computers take over and the more children are using them, the less they're going to be engaging with other types of, of toys. Sad. Um, so, I mean, one of the things that's been talked about is whether you should limit the amount of time that children Definitely. have access yeah. to those toys. I think, though, is that not just society, though? I mean, I will not let the children play outside now because it's dark and it's too cold. So they're indoors more, but that doesn't mean they should be on the computer no. or stuck yeah. in front of the TV. That's where the reading comes in. Yeah. Um, yeah. More for Olivia than Harry. So, and also there's a lot more organized activities for children outdoors. You don't just yeah. go to the park and kick a ball. You play for a football team or a specific time on a Saturday or it's Sunday. It's all very driven, yeah. isn't it's, it? And it's driven by it. parents, but is that society? Is it driven by parents? Yeah. Most, mostly, yes, but is that because of the society we live in, because of the fear that we have for our children playing outside? There's, or, there's or the no fear that you have us. of them not earning as much as they could earn in later life and wanting no, to push no them and to do with skill them up. Gang culture, oh, being right. kidnapped, being taken off somewhere. I think you have it, to be very careful in yeah. terms of um, you know, constraining the opportunities that, that, that children have. Yeah. Um, and I think, obviously, but obviously we, we do live in a different culture now where we've got concerns mm. about security mm. and things like that. Um, but I think, I mean... Computer games in themselves, they teach particular particular skills. They seem to me to be terribly violent a lot Extremely. of the time. Yeah. Even when their their central purpose is not violence. I was looking recently at a cooking game, which mm. I th I found quite fun and wasn't particularly gendered, but um, there was still quite a level of aggression around. What was it? Mm. With, with it was a child. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was it, was it yeah. sponsored by Gordon Ramsay? And you were cooking up different dinners. Yeah. But the thing about it wasn't the cooking. It was Here's the demand. I need to meet it straight away. The faster I can meet this demand, the better. Oh, the, you right. know, the more the points. And I was thinking, wow. I mean, I, I, it's not a traditional. I'm going to blow everything on the street up kind of computer game. But there was still a, a strong level of stress. Aggress there. Aggression. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's really worrying because I think in in terms of children's childhoods, they are becoming increasingly um, pressurised, mm. and we expect more and more yes. at earlier ages. Yes. And I think that's particularly evident within the education system as well, that we're getting back to a system where we're having more standardised testing at earlier ages again. And I think play in itself is most beneficial when it's freely chosen rather than when it's imposed. Yeah. So we, we have to... The structured play yeah. thing that was... Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I read a story about um, a family who realised that their children had been playing with the iPad for too long when the grandma came round and gave the child like a book and he was trying to turn the oh, page no. oh. by, 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 by flicking yeah. it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you think oh. that is actually, that is scary yeah. how we're trying to do it. But it's yeah. almost too easy just to, you're at your long car journey, have the iPad, go and watch yeah. TV, yeah. Sit in front of the TV. How long is too long in a row? And how long is too, how much is too much for in a day, would you I mean, say? I think it's important to remember with computer games that they, they don't involve interaction with another person yeah. as such. And something that's quite important during childhood is the development of understanding of other people's emotions and perspectives, um, something that we call theory of mind. So we understand how other people's minds work. And I think one thing I'd be concerned about about individual computer games is that there isn't that interactive component with another person. Whereas in play, you know, board games, you have to negotiate and, and learn kind of social skills. Oh, so. you've made me feel so much better because my boys play <laughs> online with their friends and they gang yeah. up together to kill other people. So they are <laughs> negotiating and learning these skills. That's so slightly better. Oh, yeah, my kids are fine. <laughs> but you don't have like a set amount of time, you think, beyond which, the, you know, the human mind cannot... I think it's always difficult to put kind of a, a limit on things because you, you'd want that to be supported by evidence, really. Mm. So any decisions you make about your children's well-being needs to be based upon, you know, research and evidence, really. Okay. And every child's different as well, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, so. yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. Mm. That has been a fascinating discussion and I think we could mm. carry on with this, <laughs> but I don't know how long. There's so many things we could touch on here. Join us after the break and we'll talk about our favourite What's Trending. Oh. Awesome. Welcome back. In this episode, we've been talking about Barbie versus Action Man. Who'd win, girls? 
at Barbie. Barbie. <laughs> oh, oh now, now maybe Action Man. Oh. I think she oh. what the contest is. She, yeah. would, she wouldn't play fair. <laughs> 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 she wouldn't. But look, it's time for what's trending now. Oh yeah. So we've got a lot of topics to discuss this week. We're going to start with you, Sarah. What have you been looking at? Climate change protest marches about the climate change. We're sort of wondering what people's thoughts are. Do you think this actually helps to bring the subject out there and get it into people's consciousness? Do you think it's going to help people to actually think, take climate change seriously? What Should we be taking Mary? time? You want me to say that? I just find it really difficult to get worked up about climate change. It's one of those things I know I should care. I should. <laughs> well, why, don't, why don't you care? Why don't you care? Why don't I care? I just... I think there are so many more important things to worry about right now. Like I, on the way here, I passed three or four homeless people in the doorways, various places in Liverpool mm. in the rain and this mind numbingly cold day and Christmas is coming. And mm. I just thought about the difference in, in poverty, between poverty and wealth just in our own city, which is the biggest hearted city probably in the world. But we do a lot for, for the know. homeless in our city. It's Hope Fest on Friday at District. So that's going to cover. And the cover. Hope Food Bank yeah. is, but you know, it's not weather, that. It's getting just, colder and colder and colder. For I people know. to be outside oh, now. I know, I even care. look at just... our weather that we're having. We're having more floods. We're having, you know, horrendous. There seems to be a hurricane every weekend so with some yesterday. ridiculous name. Yeah. yeah. You know, we've got hurricane this, that, and the other. I mean, Kathy. Oh, I think some of the hurricanes at the moment should be called Hurricane Pathetic because they're a bit disappointing, <laughs> some of them. But That's we have the Daily a Mail building days. it up and <laughs> saying it's going to be an apocalypse. And then there's no, I think apocalypse. climate change is a massive thing. But what I, I always seem to remind myself is. OK, I'll do my recycling and this, that and the other and make sure I'm putting my cardboard bits in. But hang on, China is pumping out all sorts of stuff into the air and, and other countries and our own country probably and big business. And it's only a little bit. What can I do? I'll try and do my best. But well, I every, if everyone did their best, I suppose that's what all these marches are out there. You know, you've got like surfers against sewage and uh, just mm. people, whether it's really? just, yeah, <laughs> surfers against not sewage. Know that. What are they doing? See the SAS. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> But I think it, it is an important issue, though, and it is good things. that it is being raised and that people Absolutely. are being made it is aware bringing of it. it to the fore. The demonstration that you, on the serious point, the question you asked was, is it bringing it to the fore? Well, it's on the news. People are obviously concerned about it, and the governments need reminding about it rather than the individuals. I want I believe. marches to make a difference, but I cannot help remembering the marches about Iraq and those yeah. kinds of, and the, mm, the extent yeah. to which that yeah. made no impact whatsoever on the powers that be. But then, well, that was a Blairite government. And I do believe in mm. collective action, I do, but... Yeah. Um, well, so Prince Charles has been harping on about this for how many years? Yeah. Not that he's any great person to follow, but, you know, oh, he's I'm been... Oh, pro-royal family, me. Well, the, Prince mm. Charles, a bit dodgy, perhaps. Yeah, but I yeah. the bits that we can do is we can, pick, you know, we can pick up our litter, we can turn our taps yeah. off when we're brushing our teeth and yes. do all those things. We but, can yeah. certainly make our children aware, because they're the future and they're going to be around Absolutely, a lot yeah. longer than us. Kathy, what have you been looking at? Well, in my um, capacity as photographer and social media addict, um, <laughs> I've noticed something yeah, right. going around. <laughs> yeah, something going around. This, this wedding photographer's had a rant about yeah. other yeah. photographers at weddings, and we're talking about people with phones, tablets, whatever. To the guests. Yes, yeah, so the guests. So you've got your bride and groom walking down the aisle and the photog one photographer at one end, one photographer at the other. And then all these people leaning yeah. out, taking the photos. And it does drive photographers yeah. mad. But things are changing on an exponential level with technology. And I know that some brides and grooms do request for so-called unplugged weddings mm. where people don't use the things. The thing is, they're missing out on it while they're actually recording yeah. it. They're on those surprise oh moments, aren't they? Like, I you remember know. seeing an yeah. image, because um, obviously in my former life, I was a wedding planner. So I was asked right. by a few bride and grooms to tell the guests no, no pictures. But I remember seeing an image of a bride after she'd just been married on her own phone. <laughs> updating her Facebook status. No, really? Now that to me took her to a whole other level. Oh, That's ridiculous. Mm. Test of I, say, I, I don't like it because yeah. I remember when um, at my um, at my brother's wedding when uh, when his wife was walking down the aisle, everyone was out like yeah. flashing everything yes. else. And you just it think, ruins the photograph. It, it, it's it's the 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 very irritating the for the photographer. But the, the hardest bit for me is when you're directing a crowd of eighty people for the group shot. Oh, 20 of them are behind you trying to get the same shot and they're meant to be in yeah. the shot. The and doing a thing selfie. I think about it all is yeah. in, in our, and this is not just a wedding oriented thing, but mm. generally in our haste to photograph everything, we are missing the moment. We're not experiencing the moment. Yeah. I've never seen we? this more mm. extreme, in, in a more extreme context than when I was at Dachau and people were photographing the ovens and stuff like that and uh, the kind of the chamber areas. And I was just thinking, what are you, A, what are you doing? Yeah. This is not, this is a, not a tourist 
attraction. Yeah, yeah. And B, you're missing the reality of what went on here and how you should be feeling and thinking right now. Mm. Um, I know Dachau's a million miles away from a wedding no, but it's, scenario. It's the same, but it's the same principle. Yeah. I'm a photograph it or I'm not present. But actually, while you're doing that, you're not present. I think we need to exactly. think about that more. Yeah, no, very much so. Totally agree. Well, Mary and I have been looking at quite similar things. Touch on yours first, Mary. Yes, I've been thinking about a, a lot of stories. I'm just going to turn the one that I, I'm particularly intrigued by on, on my phone now. Um, I, I've been particularly interested in a recent story uh, about um, the uh, a particular rock band um, who have been banning groping. We've been thinking about groping, haven't we, and these sexual kind of assault stories. We're not thinking about groping. <laughs> we've groping. been talking about groping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been talking it's about groping. It's a whole other show. But Isaac from Slaves has spoken out about it and um, has said, um, basically, if you are reading this and you are one of the men doing this, groping at our gigs and making it impossible for women to stay and feel comfortable, just know this, you aren't welcome at our shows. Um, yeah, that's I, brilliant. Yeah, that's fantastic. Mm. I took a completely uh, unrepresentative straw poll of the studio before we started <laughs> and asked the men who work here whether they've ever been groped. Absolutely not. Asked the women here. All of us have, yeah, haven't every we? Single one yeah. of us. Well, and all of us think that it's unacceptable, but all of us think that it's inevitable. Mm. Yeah. And isn't that wrong that we just know it's going to happen and there's nothing we can do about it? And in our discussion, we were talking about how to handle it. Yeah. And actually, we shouldn't we be should talking about that. that. We should be talking yeah, about how to, how to stop it, it yes. happening. It just shouldn't yeah. happen, which kind of touches on what I've been looking at, and that's the UN. Um, it's the global 16 days of um, ending violence against women by 2030. Now, OK, groping isn't violent, but it's definitely it an invasion be. of our be. privacy. It's an invasion. It's unwanted yeah. physical attention. It's, not, it's, it's, not it's, an, assault. Yeah, it's, it's an assault. It's an assault. It's an actual sexual assault yeah. now we all make jokes about you know this that and the other but when you bring it back down to basics it is a physical sexual assault whatever word you want to use yeah. a growth it's a traumatic experience it, it, it can be for case, some women yeah unusually i know you probably won't believe this but unusually it left me silent i i, I mean it's happened more than once to me mm. but i have i was silenced by it and unable to Speak, uh, to, it was totally unwanted and unwarranted attention, but I was unable to do anything. I felt yeah. paralysed. Yes. But that paralysis did not imply my consent in any no, way whatsoever. But were you, because when it happened to me, I was thinking, is this really happening? Yeah. I, I was on the tube you in London. Yourself. And I was like, is this really yeah. happening? But it's like, and then it's, how do I react what do to I do? it? What yeah. do I do? Is this, what's, what's acceptable behaviour? I actually screamed out loud and was like, get did your you hands off me. Better better than good. Me. But it took me about 15 seconds to go through the to process. Have that process, Is yes. this happening? Okay, how should so maybe we need to be educating our women as to our young women as to what is an appropriate response. But, so we can't turn around and was, slap. Can is we? this my fault? Oh yeah, really? yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, what yeah. have I done? Well, like, have I and warranted that's mad, it? isn't it? Because yeah. in essence, nothing. Yeah, you've yeah. just stood there. If you were in a bikini yeah. or in a onesie, it would make no difference because yeah. it's about power. It's not yes. about. So it's not really about sex. No. Yeah. Which no. I mean, I don't know if you know the, the figures, but one in three women actually experience violence in their lifetime. And two women a week are killed in the UK by it's, domestic violence. It's just Monday now. Yeah, so it's we've just got Monday. Two to go. Yeah. So um, what the uh, UN are actually doing, well, well, they're working in partnership with um, events in and around the city to basically galvanise everybody and it's 16 days, which finishes on the, it finishes in December. Um, it starts on the 25th of November. They're working with Liverpool City Council and ActionAid to, as a partner to galvanise everybody, to raise awareness of this, because there's that many different groups in and around, our, not just our city, but our region and the country, that the UN want to galvanise everybody, bring it all together, to let's bring an end to this by 2030. But 2030, that's 15 years away. Mm -hmm. 15 years to stop two women a week dying. Mm -hmm. how, how is that even happening in this day and age? So Disgrace. I've got to, to go back to what you were talking about. I've got to agree with Mary about climate change. It's, yeah, it's a sad <laughs> state of affairs, but you know what? Two women a week are dying. That to me needs to be stopped before we change our climate.
I mean, mm. ideally, it's not a choice between the no, two. No, it shouldn't yeah. be a choice. You know, but yeah, I, I do think that something yeah. fundamental has to happen on an educational mm. level, back to kids. Um, it's men and women that need to work together to eliminate this kind of unacceptable... And, yeah. and then back to the computer games, talk about Grand Theft Auto. Yep. We mentioned that during yeah, the break, didn't we? Yeah. And women, women are just objects within yeah. that who mm -hmm. are trying to earn money, you know, through that old age-old profession. Mm. Uh, you don't, and you see... We're just perpetuating that myth that we're objects by allowing these games into our homes. It'll be really. interesting to see who um, who the creator is of uh, the, these violent games, whether women have any input into them. Well, it's funny you should say that because the players of the games, and you do get girl gamers, quite often disguise their identities as male gamers so they don't get online abuse That's and trolling happening. That's interesting, take them more seriously. Yeah, mm. and oh, if you're a girl, you can't be a gamer, a proper mm. gamer, so well, loads Lara of abuse. Tomb Raider. Well, she's a character. Yeah, she's a good character, yeah. a good role model in that. But um, she still had to dress sexy to be She did have allowed. to dress sexy, yeah. Mm. Wrong, isn't it? Mm. That's all we've got time for. Another fantastic <laughs> show with some brilliant topics. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.